She was shocked when I found out how I decided to get back at her. Her life would never be the same again. My wife and I have been married for 27 years. We have three children. A son 25 years old, daughters 20 and 5 years old. I am 50 years old and my wife is 47. I had my third child at the age of 45, my wife was 42. I don't have a pot belly, I am not bald and bald, on the contrary, I have thick hair, though it is already half grey. But my wife and acquaintances say it does not spoil me. I know that women like me. I do not smoke and practically do not drink. My potency is also alright. And that's not bragging. With my wife before all this sordid history, sex was regular, mostly in the morning, as the most productive, since the body is rested. And with this not once every six months or a month, but at least three times a week, or even more often, every morning or every other day. Everything was varied enough. We did not have any forbidden topics in terms of intimacy. I did not cheat on my wife during all these years, even though I had had women before her. I loved her. Besides, I was a bit squeamish. I didn't need anybody else, and she was my own. Everything about my wife suited me. I knew every millimeter of her body. I knew what she needed and what she enjoyed the most. And she knew. That's why everything was fine here. She hadn't once in all the years given him any reason to doubt her, either. Not once until recently. We were supposed to celebrate our 27th wedding anniversary this summer. I wanted to go to Cyprus with her, but then this virus be damned. But it was nothing. In February, I got something that I felt like my face was hit against a concrete wall and even ran over a roller. It is all banal. Office romance. And as I was told, even before the new year it began with her corporate party. I don't know how true it is, but it doesn't matter. And what an actress. Anyway, she was turned in by her own employees. Some lady, maybe a rival eliminated, I do not know. But a fact is a fact. He's six years younger than her. He's 41. He has a wife, a 14-year-old daughter. He himself holds a position just above my wife's, hopefully ex-wife's position after all. Their first intercourse took place during a corporate party in his office. But I know this by hearsay. They were well coded. They did not write anything to each other, so the correspondence does not catch them. But she relaxed. One night, I understand, he didn't close his office door must have been in such a hurry to get some privacy. So the ajar door and filmed them on his cell phone. This video was sent to me from an unknown number. My first impulse was to hit her. Good thing she wasn't home. Even though I had never laid a hand on her in my life. Then I cooled down a bit and started thinking about what to do. Go to her lover in the face to give? Not an option. Then I decided to deal with him. The fact that I will not live with her anymore, it's not a question, but what to do with the joint property. I have a company that I myself raised, and I'm not going to split it in half. So I decided to withdraw the assets first, and then get a divorce. I pretended I didn't know anything. I do not know how I managed to keep an external calm, the enemy cannot envy. But I stopped kissing her after all, and the intimacy between us ended. I told her I wasn't feeling well. At my words about the sickness even worried, asked to go to the hospital, but looking at her caring eyes, wanted to put it well. But held on. Sold my car, there was a reason, I wanted to change it. Then sold her car, said there was an option to buy a better one. I took the money. The self-isolation helped with the firm, at least one plus. I let all the employees go home, you know, that was the way it was supposed to be. Then I paid their salaries and fired them due to bankruptcy. Took the money out of the accounts too. I started the liquidation procedure. At the same time, I started registering the same firm in my mother's name. Wife didn't know anything, waited for a cool car. We only have a two-bedroom apartment in a new building, but there is nothing to do. But we will not divide this house, my wife is a bummer. The thing is, the land there belonged to my grandparents, they had a house there. The village is ruined, but the place is great. The river, the forest. Cottages began to appear. After my grandmother died, my mother inherited. The old house was demolished. Built their two-story beautiful neat house, which my wife and I dreamed of since my youth. We actually lived in that house. I know my wife adores this house. Together with her, we planned everything there, planted a garden, 
beds with flowers, swimming pool. Well, I had one time to re-register it to myself, although my mother offered. Toward the end, my wife smelled something. She began to ask questions, including why I was unkind, why I didn't kiss her, why there was no love in the morning, she was alive. And most of all I feel sorry for our five-year-old daughter, I love her. I love all my children, but this little girl especially after all, she is our afterbirth, my favorite girl. And so at the end of April my wife and I had a conversation. She must have felt that something was wrong, I looked, she was shaking. I showed her the video. She fell on her knees, saying, I'm sorry. I asked her why. What was wrong? She said that she had made a mistake, that she did not understand what she was doing. Her son turned away from her, the eldest daughter was running back and forth between us, she blamed her too, and the youngest daughter did not understand why her parents did not live together. So she has nothing left. No car, no money, no company either. And what did she achieve by crossing out everything we had? People do all kinds of nonsense in life, and in the end they call it fate. I recall the words of someone dear to me. I am the eldest daughter in a family with many children, and this is an obligation. Since childhood, I knew that I had to be an example, always tried to be the best, went to the other end of town in the best school phismatic. My parents were passive, and my father was never able to make it in life although he had more than a chance. I have a sharp, explosive, strong character. I did not respect my father because he made me literally beg him for money. I was fiercely protective of my mother, and for that he often hit me hard, even though I resisted, and could slap him with all my might, with pleasure. I remember once, when I was little, about 10 years old, after he beat me with a chair, I swore to myself that I would break him and leave home, live an independent life, where no one would boss me around. There was no intimacy as such with my parents. I talked myself into transferring, persuaded myself to let go to study. For all my achievements, movement forward, desire to learn, to change something, I was not told a word. Although at school, and later at uni, everyone loved me and I was a leader. Three years of frantic classes at the new Lyceum, humiliation from my dad's rich daughters, who for some strange reason did not like the fact that I dressed at the market, and I successfully get a grant in the best technical university. It seemed so then. Thought how much happiness and jubilation there was. The feeling that I had broken free. No need to grovel, to ask permission to answer the phone, to go out on the street, because I was locked up, not allowed to communicate with anyone. Only in my second year, at the age of 18, I went to my first birthday party, you won't believe it, but I did. I arrived in the capital, bright, dynamic, ambitious. On the first day, in a huge mall, seeing all these rarefied girls in heels, I just realized that I was miserable, and that was it. How do I live on a stipend that is below the cost of living? I counted pennies, there was not enough for clothes, only food. And what about plans to go abroad, to graduate school? I could not rely on anyone. The dormitory was a shock to me. All the debauchery, the university turned out to be a place where people were living it up. I did not go out of the dormitory, the pair, hungry dorm library on this life came to a standstill. The first semester, there were thoughts of work, but how to combine with the study. Wild fear, a strange city, loneliness, insecurity. Insecurity, where do people live on such huge money? I am beautiful, even very beautiful. Big black eyes, long thick eyelashes, sharp cheekbones, regular facial features, shiny hair. Average height, classic female hourglass figure, small legs, and as Kuprin said, easy breathing. And when a girl is naturally beautiful, but poorly dressed and shod compared to her more well-to-do, mediocre peers, guys' choices hurt a lot. They love with their eyes and rags are shiny. 
At 17, eager to live life to the fullest and unable to buy a decent cream, he caught me. We met at the train station by some miracle. He didn't have time to buy plane tickets. My humble self was going home for the vacations. He was a former deputy minister of an industry in one of the Soviet republics, so to speak. In the present, a very successful businessman. A tall, handsome, grown man with a low, commanding voice, big hands, a real alpha male. Our seats were next to each other. A typical traffic conversation ensued. Further, I opened my soul to a stranger I thought I would never see again. How to live? What do I do to live well? To feel confident and secure. Moreover, I never considered marriage, although rich boys in Lexuses and Pradas more than once fell in love with a modest girl. He offered to help me with a job, since he owns stores, and said he had an acquaintance who could help. Honestly, I was very happy that I had found a man. It was only later that an unpleasant thought slipped into my mind that he was treating me differently. I will not describe what happened next. It would take three volumes, but there was the deprivation of virginity, getting expelled from university at the initiative of his wife, and pregnancy. Then an abortion. Ah yes, before that, the fabulous life that engulfed me, a nay fool of 17 years. Beautiful clothes, expensive cars, restaurants, flowers, the feeling of complete power over him. He adored me, a little girl, carried me in his arms, kissed his feet. And I was obsessed with him. Everything that began with a desire to find a patron ended with a frenzy passion, an overwhelming desire to belong to him. Who knew I could be so passionate? He opened a new space into which I immersed myself. Life changed, I transferred to another university, which was much better than the previous one, and stronger. I studied, closed the difference, began to learn English, worked out at the gym, rested wherever possible. I stopped counting the money. He paid for everything. I helped my parents, bought things for the house, spoiled my siblings. During the breaks, of course, there were violent quarrels, scandals, sobs at classes. But for me, the choice was already made. It was better to love a grown-up man than to love a peer sitting on a park bench. Three years had passed, I was about to graduate, and suddenly I realized that my feelings were gone. The crazy passion was gone and the realization that I had completely sunk into my serene existence began to press harder and harder. There were no more goals. A job. He would get me a job at a prestigious company. Housing. Buying an apartment, he promised. A car. You'll get your license in the summer and we'll buy a little car for my favorite girl. During this time, he left his wife several times and wanted to marry me. But how? I'm 20 years younger, and my parents wouldn't accept him. He has a wife and children. I told him it was better to wait and split the company in half, or the prenuptial agreement would leave it to her. Yes, pragmatism is in my blood, except from whom the hell it comes. I got tired of their marital problems, his jealousy, and left. A year after we broke up, I got a job on my own. I provide for myself, rent an apartment, pay for English courses. There's a major exam in two months. I seem to have enough for everything, but the former scope is gone. The guy I'm with now is a year older than me. We graduated from university together. At the beginning, he seemed so smart and capable, and now I see that he earns less than I do, and there is no progress at work, although he has been working for the third year. My ex-boyfriend offers me to go back, and I want to. They both love me so much, to tears, to self-denial. With whom to be? I don't want to live a gray, limited life with a husband who will then look at young girls. A woman's woman, especially at her age, is made by money. What should I do? I still have time to get married. I'm only 21. 
And with the first, I'll have all the conditions by then to support the younger and prepare the basis for a family. And with a boy of the same age, I do not know, maybe I will have to work for both of them. Although he is very good, kind, noble, but they don't give money for that. As for my feelings, I think I've grown cold to both of them. Everything hangs on what they do, and I'm like a pendulum, back and forth. 